Hi, um, my name is Allison. Today is March 23rd. Um, I'm coming on here um, because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ and um, I actually wrote out everything I was going to say because I wanted to make sure I didn't um, leave anything out and um, I want it to be as genuine as possible. But at the same time, I also want to make sure I um, give every point that I wanted to make. Um, points that the Holy Spirit wanted me to relay to people was he wants me to acknowledge the fact that I'm being obedient to him and that I don't normally post videos of myself. I have never been a loud person when it comes to my faith, but recently I've um, become on fire for telling the truth. My name um, is Allison and it means truth and honesty. And I had gone by the name of Allie um, for many years. Um, and just recently in the last maybe couple months, God told me to go back to my original name and proclaim the truth of Jesus Christ because my name means honesty and that he is the Messiah and he is the only way to true salvation and eternal life with him. Um, I'm able to do this video with the courage and the power that Jesus has put into my, unto me to warn the people of the upcoming judgment that is about to take place on the earth. He also wants people to know that there is little time and there is still a chance to repent and to know him before he comes to judge and he will accept you still. He says to come as you are and he will wash your sins away with the blood he poured out on the cross to break the curse of sin. You just have to believe in him and receive the free gift of salvation that he will give you. The door is still open, but it is about to shut. And once it is shut, it can never be opened again. He is the one that opens the door and he is the one that shuts the door. And this is the last days that you still have the opportunity to be in heaven with him. I have given, I have been given the assignment of being a watchman. Um, I didn't ask to be a watchman. Um, I recently found out that I was a watchman and I don't know if anybody's ever heard of what watchmen are. If you're um, a believer and you've been a believer for a, a while, I'm sure you've heard of like the watchman on the wall. Um, and I didn't know what it meant myself until God revealed it to me in scripture multiple times confirming what I am supposed to do and that I am supposed to be a witness and a watchman for him. I don't want to have to do these things, but I'm just being obedient and listening to him daily. He gave me these verses, Isaiah 62, 6. I have set watchmen up upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence. And then he gave me Ezekiel 3, 17 through 19. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. And then Ezekiel 33, 6. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and thy people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. And um, I took that, that verse pretty seriously because I feel like, I don't want the people, other people's blood on my hands um, for not warning the people of what is to come. Um, so that's pretty, I take it really, really seriously, that one. Um, Amos 3, 7. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his, revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. I've never considered myself a prophet. I'm just an obedient servant to God. And he's chosen me. Um, I'm a nobody that um, he's chosen me to be, <laughs> to tell people, um, God is such a good father. He will never do anything without first warning his people. And I pray the Lord finds me worthy to escape the judgment he has coming. I ask him daily and I repent daily. Um, a dream I had before this dream I'm about to share made me wonder if I was going to be here when all these things took place. Um, and the reason for that is I did have a dream um, prior to this um, months back. I, I don't even know the day, but um, I, I was here when everything was chaos and the ground was so uneven and I was running and I had my children. 
Um, and I was just trying to get through and just look forward. And I kept saying, don't look back, don't look back. Um, a dream I had uh, that, that I had before that, um, it, it shook me pretty hard. And I asked God to show me if the rapture was real because I've always been taught that the rapture was real. Um, but then recently I've come to find all this information that maybe the rapture isn't real and that we're taking up after the tribulation. But I, you know, growing, I grew up in church and I was just always told, Hey, you're going to be taken up. Um, and the things that God has showed me or shared with me is that, um, people that are following him and truly following him will be taken, um, will be taken up prior to the rapture. But I think the lukewarm, I mean, from, from what I've been reading in scripture, I, I don't know, cause I don't claim to know everything. I'm still learning every day, but, um, I just pray that, um, you all pray for yourselves to know that, um, what God has in store for you. If, if, you know, and if you find the truth, that's, he's giving you that truth. But for me, I know that he will protect me and he's promised me that. Um, and, um, let's see, it had been weeks since I asked the prayer that night, um, before I had the dream, I told God that I didn't want to test him. So it had been one week. Okay. So I had, um, that dream like a couple months ago, let's just say. And then, um, I shared a post on, um, YouTube about that dream. And then I started asking God, I was like, well, God, am I going to be left here? Like, tell me, you know, tell me I'm willing to go through persecution. I'm willing to endure it, um, for the kingdom. And, um, I, then I asked for, a, I said, can you give me a dream or can you give me a sign? And then I actually repented of that on um, the night that I had this dream. Um, I had the dream on the, what did I, did I write down? March 20th. Um, and so at 2.51 AM, but I had asked him for that dream. And, um, but then I felt like I was testing him and I said, God, forgive me. I don't want to test you. You are God and I am not. So um, I repented of that. And I just said, if you if you want to reveal the truth, you'll reveal the truth to me. And I'm just trusting in you. And that night I had the dream. Um, and then the last verse I wanted to share with you was Luke 21, 36. Watch thee for and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So I'm just, I'm praying that I'm worthy. Um, I, you know, as I've gotten closer and closer to God, um, it's been about two years that I really changed, started changing my life and doing, doing things differently. Um, I really have been being a spiritually attacked physically and spiritually. Um, and I don't want to get into all of everything that's going on, but I will say that the closer you get to God, you will be more attacked and you know you're going in the right direction when you start getting close because it is a battle and um, just stay strong. Um, Ephesians 6, 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And it is real. So um, I just, uh, every morning and every night, before every morning before I go out and every night before I go to bed, I put the full armor of God on and I just tell him to cover me in his blood to protect me from all and everything. Um, he wants me to share a dream I had on March 20th, like I said, 2021 at 2.51 a.m. I was asleep in bed and out of nowhere, I felt my body being snatched up. And I believe this is a warning. God gave me a dream, but it didn't seem like a dream. I was snatched out of bed and shot up into space, and I seemed to be in a portal of some kind. He literally snatched me up, kind of like he said, we get caught up in the air. Um, it was the coolest thing. It was, I was like I was in a vacuum, and then um, I, I was going so fast, like the speed of light. I'm not kidding. It was so cool, and it was real. Like I felt my body literally leave my bed. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm being raptured. This is so cool. Um, I knew God was taking me up. I was like, 
wow, I can't believe that this is actually happening. My Savior has come for me. Um, all around me were stars and space, but it was going so fast. Like I literally, it was like I was just boom, shut up. And I was just looking straight up. It was so cool. Um, and I could hear whooshing around sounds around me and I could feel the wind just blowing on my face. It was the coolest feeling. I felt the most peace I've ever felt in my life. Um, and then I came to a sudden halt and I was looking up and I was inside of a well and I could see at the top of the well, um, a blue sky with beautiful clouds at the top and the top was circular and around the top hole had stones all around it in a perfect shaped circle. I popped out and found myself in a very vivid, colorful valley with hills and grass and animals. And there was a castle with a large, to my right, and there was a large group of people kind of, it, it, it went down into the castle. Um, and there was just, just tons of people around, um, around the castle. And then I kind of look over to the left of the people and I see this man on a horse and um, he's has, it's a white horse and he had armor and it looked like he had a sword and one of those, I don't know what they're even called back like in the castle days, a joust or something. I don't know. Um, and then all of a sudden people start screaming when they, I, when the horses and the horse is going kind of crazy and everybody's just screaming, they're like, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And I go, what? Jesus is coming. I'm like, I'm excited for everybody. It was really cool. And then um, it was like he was there to give an announcement. And um, at first I thought the announcement was going to come from the castle. But then now I realized that all the attention was on the man and the horse and the crowd of the people attention was um, uh, at looking at him. Um, there were no other horses or men with armor and, um, the armor was, I, I could see like red on the armor. Um, I wasn't close enough to see like everything that was going on, but I, I knew what was going on. Um, around me were rolling hills and colors that I've never seen before that were so vivid. Um, colors like you can't even imagine. It was almost like I was in a cartoon. It was that cool. Um, there were trees of some type also. I just, I don't know. And then there was like roads made of something. I, I don't know. Every It was so, things I've never seen before. Um, next, I was pulled to another scene. It was a pitch black out. It was pitch black um, completely. It was like everything was beautiful. And then all of a sudden I'm taken into this other scene. And um, I'm not scared. Even though it's dark, I'm not scared. Like I felt comfort the whole time I'm in this um, dream, vision, whatever you want to call it, trance. Um, and it was pitch black out, like absolutely not one speck of light. The only thing I could see was that there was this van driving to the left. And I think that signified something. Um, it was driving slowly on a dirt road. Um, it looked like it was just going nowhere. Um, it was like driving, 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 but never getting anywhere. Um, I couldn't see the driver. Um, it was like blackness in the front and there was black to my left, black to my right, but I could see something blue, like a neon blue light inside of the van. And the next thing I know, I'm sitting inside the van and I'm looking at these, it looks like, I think it was four or five halos that I saw. They look like halos, like circular of something. And I'm like, and I said, what is that? And then it shows me, I can see two girls and then I can see the other halos, but I can see two girls. And I said, who is that? And then it shows me and I'm in my pajamas. It's me and my daughter, Jasmine. <laughs> and we're wearing these blue neon collars. They almost look like they're electronic or something. I don't know. Um, around our necks. And I was like, what does that mean? And then all of a sudden came out of the dream. Um after this dream, I prayed and asked God to show me that this was a dream from him and not from another spirit masquerading as light. And because I, I wasn't going to post the dream and tell others if it wasn't from God, because I don't want to lead mislead people. Um, but God has given me confirmation and permission um, to, re to release this dream. Um, he's been pushing me um, to put this on Facebook. <laughs> 
even though I don't want to, because like I posted one other video on YouTube and um, I don't really like posting stuff. <laughs> and on Facebook, I'm going to have more attention. So I'm not doing this because I want to. I'm doing this because he wants me to and I'm being obedient. So um, right after the dream vision, I woke up and went and told my daughter um, who was awake in her room on her bed about the encounter. And then um, I was just trying to understand and comprehend what the dream meant. Um, this experience was definitely me being caught up or raptured. Um, uh, what people, you know, think of the rapture because the, rap the word rapture is actually not in the Bible. A lot of people don't know that um, from my bed or harpazo, which um, means being caught up or whatever. Um, it was obvious that God showed me I was in the kingdom of heaven and was waiting to go have the supper of the lamb with Jesus. Um, the next day, so then the next day I'm cleaning in the garage and I see this Amazon van drive by and I was like, okay, God's trying to tell me something because that van that I saw drive by was the exact van that I saw me and my daughter and the other people with halos on their neck. Um, so I don't know what the Amazon, what, what that means, but it was in my dream. So, um, and then, um, I don't know, I have a couple thoughts of what that could be. I mean, I definitely understand what the, the vision of like the kingdom of heaven, I understand that. But then the vision of me seeing this, this van going to the left, um, I see, so like I was wearing pajamas and I didn't look very good. I, well, do we all ever look any, very good? But I was wearing pajamas and I was like, okay, so it was kind of like I was taken off guard, I guess. Um, and then I think the first thing that came to my mind was that he comes like a thief in the night to take you. And because I was happy, I was smiling, even though I was, it was dark. And so it kind of reminded me of like, he's the only light and that halo around my neck. Um, let's see, I put, um, so it, it was kind of like we had been taken captive. Um, it says, I, oh, let's see, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I said, I knew the man on the white horse was Jesus. Um, but the second vision of me in the van is interpreted um, it could be interpreted that I was on a road to death. So like everybody's kind of born and um, because of our, because of Adam and Eve's sin, we're on the road to death, but, and to hell, but Jesus set me free and he gave me a crown. Um, and that, that halo of salvation, it's kind of like I'm sealed with him. And he, even though my body and my flesh is going to hell, my my spirit is going to heaven. So I, I, I saw it like that. Um, blue signifies heaven in the Bible. Um, I also believe it could be also mean that um, I was about to be put into slavery or martyred up for, you know, for, for my faith in Jesus. Um, I don't know. <sighs> Whichever it is, I mean, if I'm going to be persecuted, that's fine. I'm choosing life and it doesn't matter. It was funny because I that next day when I was cleaning the garage, I was listening to Christian music and I heard um, a song. It doesn't matter. I can't remember this, even the song, what it was called, but he was like, it doesn't matter if, you know, I don't, something, if something doesn't happen, as I'll still trust in you. And I just thought about um, Daniel in the furnace. And it's like, I, I can't remember the verse, what it said, but he was like, even if, he, God doesn't save me. I'm not going to bow down. And it's kind of like, um, I, it doesn't matter. I can go through persecution. I'm not going to give up my, I'm not going to, nobody can take away my faith. You can take away my body. You can torture me and you can put me to death, but you're not going to take my salvation. So I took it like that. Um, and then, um, well, I'm not going to, I don't think God wants me to release this next information. Let me see. Uh, I don't think maybe another time. Um, so I really, from, from everything that I got from this, I want everyone, whether you're a believer or you're not a believer, if you're not a believer, I want you to know that Jesus 
Christ loves you. He died for you for your sins because um, you aren't perfect, but he took on the burden. He took on your sin so that you could be set free and um, and that you could go to heaven and live an eternal life. Um, and that everything in this world is a lie um, from the enemy to keep your attention off the truth. We're constantly being bar bombarded with electronic stuff like social media and all that. Um, and God revealed to me that the lie, um, I fasted um, for a few days and he just really showed me like everything around us is just, just lies and that we really need to dwell in him and keep our focus on him daily. We have to take up our cross daily. Um, he's asked me to warn everyone that his wrath is about to be poured out on the earth. And the only way to defeat death is by believing in him and Jesus Christ, that he came in the flesh as God and he died on the cross and he was resurrected on the third day. And when we believe in him, he says, we will no longer want to do the things that we once did. And we, and if we unknowingly do things or sin against him, we, we feel bad. Um, if we know, we'll, we'll know we're truly in him if we feel bad and we'll want to repent and turn away. It's like, yes, it, you can, it's kind of like you, you can ask for, um, I was a, always a believer, but I kind of felt like I could just do whatever I wanted and then um, go back and repent. No, it's like, if you really love someone, you're not going to continue to hurt them. So I love Jesus and I'm not going to continue to hurt him. Um, I've really just given everything up. Like I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't, I mean, all of those things that I used to do, I don't do them anymore because he's the most important thing in my life. I, he's my, he's my father. So um, let's see. Um, another thing I wanted to say was um, we will know his return when the fig tree blooms. Israel is the fig tree in the Bible that bloomed and became a nation on May 15th, 1948 at 1201 a.m. And he said, this generation will not pass away until they see the return of Christ. Um, it has been 70 to 80 years, or uh, 70 to 80 years at the most was a generation in the Bible. Um, repent and turn from, I, I can't remember the verse, by the way, sorry. <laughs> repent and turn away from anything. Wait, let's see, what did I say? Sorry. <laughs> repent and turn from anything evil that separates you from God and keep Jesus' commandments of love God, um, and love God and um, others, keeping the Sabbath holy and always and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and you will be promised eternal life. God also gave me a dream a while back um, of his destruction and um, after the bride is taken, which is going to be chaos, he says, um, he says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And that's John 10, 27 to 28. Um, and I know I'm his sheep because I hear him. I hear his voice and um, he wants you to sometimes just be silent and just hear him and listen to him. Um, I love you all. I hope you choose life because he's at the door. And once the door is shut, it will never be opened again. Just like Noah and the ark and the door shut on the wicked people. I don't know the day. I don't know the time. I don't know the hour. But I know we are in the generation of his return. And he is at the door. And he's about to shut the door and lock it closed. He will never leave you or forsake you. He will light your path and guide you. Love, Allison. Thank you.